The scripture reading for this morning is taken from John 1, sorry, John chapter 1, um, verses 1 through 18. I'm going to read in um, the message. I find that sometimes if we're not hearing it repeated in the same version, we are able to think about it a little, a little more. Um, the message entitles this section, The Life Light. The Word was first. The Word was present to God. God present to the Word. The Word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. There once was a man, his name John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light, he was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world. The world was there through him. And yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God's selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called, this is the one, the one I told you who was coming after me. But in fact, he was ahead of me. He always, he has always been ahead of me, has always had the first word. We all live off his generous abundance, gift after gift after gift. We got the basics from Moses, and then this exuberant giving and receiving, this endless knowing and understanding. All this came through Jesus, the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, not so much as glimpse. This one-of-a-kind God expression, who exists at the very heart of the Father, has made him plain as day. Well, blessings to you. Let me take a look at you. You haven't seen me for a while. Do you recognize me? Yes, you do. It is good to be with you this morning, and I am excited about what we're going to do both this Sunday and next Sunday, and uh, I'm going to take a little different format to what I, than what I would normally do in preaching, although I am going to be preaching. But before I do that, I, I promised Jim a story. Jim uh, had, was working in the, the fellowship, the, our gymnasium, and we had set up to uh, have our discussion this morning during Sunday school time, and he had the mic, the soundboard was there, he had the mic, and he said, hello, 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 and he said, hmm, there's something not working here, and he went over and he said, oh, I guess I should turn it on. It reminded me of a story of a, a gal that was in a, a psychology ward in a hospital, and she believed she was dead. And no matter what psychologists 
or her therapist said or did would not convince her that she wasn't dead. And so one day she was having a session with her therapist and the therapist said to her, called her by name and said, did dead people bleed? She looked at the therapist kind of inquisitively and, and said, no, dead people don't bleed. And so he said, could I have your finger? And he pricked her finger. And she went, oh, dead people do bleed. <laughs> You see, there are, there are certain rational things that become irrational at times. But I want our time together to be very rational and thoughtful and maybe even thought-provoking. So this morning, and uh, pardon the previous text that said John 1 through 18, that was a, a miscommunication on my part. Uh, but uh, we want to look at this title. What is our part in the mission of God the Father for His Son, Jesus Christ? If you will go back with me a few weeks, if you'll recall, I used this text just before Christmas. I'm not going to ask you if you remember. That would be unfair, per se. But uh, maybe, you, maybe if I asked, do you remember at some point, some time ago, this text was used? Maybe you could come to that. But we, we looked at the text at that time under the title, The Light of Christmas and Beyond. And we associated with that Deuteronomy 18. And I shared that uh, our text here in John 1 is actually the fulfillment of something that lo the Lord God Jehovah said to Moses in Deuteronomy, that I will raise up a prophet like you from among our people. And Jesus is that prophet. He is the fulfillment of that. But uh, if you recall, we, uh, we will get there. Um, we looked at John's gospel through three lenses, and I'm not going to go into detail at this time. We did a shortened version of, of this because we had communion as well. But, but recognize that if we look at John's gospel through three lenses in our text, we will recognize that John first spells out the mission of God the Father for his son, Jesus Christ. And the verses are there. And then we looked at the fact that the second lens that John looks at in regard to the mission of God the Father for his son, Jesus Christ, was the struggle of man with God's mission. For Jesus Christ. And we looked at those verses very briefly. And then we looked at the blessing and benefit of those who receive God the Father's mission for His Son, Jesus Christ, and looked at those verses briefly. One of the things that I, I recognize is that, uh, and, I, and I should go to this slide as well because it will be a little further delineation. Hmm. Now we, there we are. <laughs> Somewhere it is. There. Here are some things that we looked at in the mission of God the Father for His Son Jesus Christ. We looked at verses 1 to, nine, one to 4 and 9, and we recognized that God was, that Jesus was, partnering with God the Father in creation and is creation's final illuminator. And we recognize that Jesus is light and he's the light of life. And I'm going to go very quickly over these, but I, I, they're key to what I'd like to move into. We recognize that Genesis 1.1 says that in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. And in verses 26 and 27 of Genesis 1, we realize that uh, God said, let us make man in our image. And we recognize that when in Genesis 1, as we look at John 1, 1, that Jesus was involved in the creating of the earth as well as in the image of man or the image of God in man. And we see 
Also, Colossians 1, 13 to 20 and Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. It'd be fun to just dig into those verses as well as they are parallel text to our, our text in John 1. But we won't, for time's sake, we're not going to do that. Verse 14, we recognize that the gospel, this was the gospel of John's birth narrative. And that the fact that Jesus was the word made flesh and he dwelt among us. I like what the message says. He moved into our neighborhood. It's a wonderful statement. But the the Greek word that's used, that moved, it says moved into our neighborhood or dwelt, is the word tabernacled and not temple. There's a mobility issue that happens when a person, when Jesus is tabernacling, like the Old Testament tabernacle. When it was built in the Exodus period, It was movable. It moved from place to place. And this is what what the Word made flesh does. It isn't stationary. It doesn't invite people to come. It goes and it moves technically into neighborhoods in and around Israel. We looked at verses 16 through 18, theme that, that we recognize that God bring this the word brings god the father's full character to us great uh, the law was given through moses yet we re- we recognize that through that through jesus grace and truth are realized in jesus and there's we could talk some more about that but that also i added verse 29 because that was our communion text and jesus was to be the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world, and a reference to Revelation 5, 6, where we we see Jesus in the throne, in the middle of the throne in heaven, and he's as a lamb, slain yet alive. Very interesting things that go on there. But as we move on very quickly, I wanted to give that as a background. I wanted to ask this question. What is our part in the mission of God the Father for His Son, Jesus Christ? That's the essential question that we want to look at. But we also want to put it through this lens. Does or how does what the Apostle John shares in John 1, 1 through 18 and verse 29 about Jesus' mission also apply to us as followers of Jesus Christ? And it is at this point that I hope you have your Bibles, or something to follow along with, because I want to look at Scripture after Scripture to help identify how or how does what the Apostle John shares about Jesus' mission also apply to us as followers of Jesus Christ. You will recognize that my answer is yes, and we'll go into that, but but I just wanted to go through a couple of passages very quickly and please follow along if you can uh i don't know as a as a child in uh, a, particularly in junior church we used to have sword drills do you remember do you remember those do you ever have those here raise your sword okay who's going to be the first one to find and the reference was given and everybody went <laughs> and it was a way i learned my bible because in sixth grade in the sixth grade boy class fifth and sixth grade boy, boys class Bob Malik taught us the books of the Bible, and we memorized them. And then we memorized them in their divisions. And I'll tell you what, when our swords are up and we knew that, boy, we could recognize that, oh, I'm in John, I need, uh, I need Acts. And, and, boy, you could get right to it. I'm not saying that you should memorize the books of the Bible and where they're found. But I would suggest it would be helpful for you as a Christian if you knew the makeup of your Bible. So let's look at Acts 11.26. And again, I, I, will, I apologize, but I do, I'm not really. I, we're going to move somewhat quickly. 11.26. Notice this verse. And when he had found him, that is Saul of Tarsus, Barnabas is looking for Saul. He brought him to Antioch. And it came about for the entire year that they met with the church and taught considerable numbers. And the disciples were first called 
Christians at Antioch. They were first called Christians. Now, if you, if you separate that word Christian, you will have Christians. And one Greek scholar that I listened to or was studying under years ago said that the Greek word actually means Christ in miniature. They, they were first called miniature Christs in Antioch. Wow. You and I are not just believers in Christ. The Bible teaches that we are Christ in miniature, not out of ourselves. Of course, that's what, that's what was read in John 1.12. We are birthed out of the will of the Father, infused by the life of Jesus, and His character is growing up inside us and through us. And then we must look at Ephesians 1.22 very quickly. Now, you're going to realize something also, that we're not going to get through this study this morning. It's going to be a continuation for next week. But do you know how many times you and I very rarely read past the words of the Bible? How many of you have a marginal reference Bible or a, a footnoted Bible? How many of you, when you're reading the Bible, stop to pay attention to your footnotes? My, I recognize many times when I'm reading devotionally, I do not go, oh, there's a one there. I wonder what that one means. Or there's a, there's a little C there. What does that mean? And I go over to the margin, and there may be a, a, a reference of the Greek says this and helps me understand it better, or maybe there's another biblical reference that I need to follow. But anyway, just as having said that, that's, that's a bonus this morning. Ephesians 1 says this. This is, this is very important. It says, And he, God, put all things under subjection, under, uh, uh, and he, God, put all things in subjection under his, Jesus' feet, and gave him, that is Jesus, his head over all things the church. Notice this phrase. Which is his body. And then it goes on and says, the fullness of him who fills all things. Now, let's break that down. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven. Where is Jesus now? Where? He's here. He's there. He's there. We have become together the expression of, of who Jesus is in our world. Think about that a moment. You are not just people who come on Sunday morning to worship Jehovah because through Jesus. You are, in fact, wherever you are at, a representation of who Jesus really is. The beauty of the gospel bar none is that you are very important to the plan of God. Very important. In fact, um, non-believers, while they are important and God loves them, they do not have the importance that God has for you and I in this world. We are Christ's Jesus in miniature to our world because of his life flowing through our lives Let's go on. If I can get this to, to do. There we are. Yes. What John is seeking to teach us about Jesus also suggests that we have a part in God's divine plan for Jesus. Recognize that in verse 4 of chapter 1 of John, and I need to just read that very quickly, and I need to make sure... Keep track of time here. 
that Jesus, it says, in him was light, and the light was the light of men. We recognize that about Jesus. But what about each or all of us? Notice 1 John 1, 7, if you would with me. 1 John 1, 7. Now, I'm at James. James, 2 Pete, 3 John. So if you're at Peter, then keep going because you've got a little farther to go. Here's 1 John 1, 7. This verse. If we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light, as he, Jesus, is in the light, and Jesus was light, we are walking in his light, but we are a reflection of Jesus to our world. And notice that if we have allowed Jesus to touch every place of us, which realistically is the work of discipleship in an ongoing way and will never be complete until we see Jesus face to face in heaven. But as we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. How can that be? I have a difference with you, theoretically speaking. The Bible says I've got to overcome that difference in myself. Because if I don't, I will push that other person away and force a lack of fellowship to exist because I am not willing to walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. We, you'll recognize Matthew 5.14. That was quoted to last week, I think it was. It wasn't last week, Matthew 14, here in the, uh, the, the speaker who, or, or am I wrong? Maybe I listened. Anyway, I know one of our speakers between myself and, and Christmas and now used that text. You are the light of the world. And we could go on. And then Psalm 119, 105. David says, Thy word is a light unto my path. Is that right? A lamp unto my path. No. See, I, gotta, I should look at it. I always get it confused. Thy word is a lamp, feet, and a light unto my path. Thank you. See, you know the word better than you think you do. But light. Jesus is light. And we are to be that same light to our world. Notice one five. Jesus is a light shining in the darkness. Maybe I should just quickly read it. It says, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not comprehend or overtake it. What about each and all of us? There, in John's gospel particularly, there is a light versus darkness uh, experience that goes on, theme that runs through the gospel. And I just want to look at some of those. Notice John 3.19, not too far from John 1, where John writes this, these, these words. And this is... The judgment that light has come into, into the world and men love darkness rather than light for their deeds were evil. And then it goes on. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. Verse 21. But he who practices the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be manifest as having been wrought in God. Translated it says this. Truth is light. I walk in that light. Do I bring all of my deeds and who I am to the light so that the light of Jesus will expose that which is not of the part of, of light 
And I can then work through that and put it under the blood of Jesus for his forgiveness and walk away from that part of darkness because the light has shined on me. But that's very important to John. What about 8.12? Verses 8, uh, uh, John 8, verse 12. Give you a chance to get there. And me too. And Jesus therefore spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then look at 12 uh, verses, uh, uh, verse 35, I believe it is. If I get there. You know what? I do not have the right text there. Go ahead. 1235. Thank you. And, I, and I've got it printed that way and I second guessed myself. 1235 and then 36. 1235. While you have the light, believe in the light in order that you may become sons of the light. You see. Again, there's that sense of Jesus' light, and we also bring that light into the relationships that we have around us. And then uh, 1236, I, no, we just read that one, I'm sorry, 35. For a little while longer, the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness may not overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going, and then while you have the light, believe in the light in order that you may become sons of the light. And, and Barb, I think it was you this morning that had that story about the, the blind man with the light, you see. And if our light is darkness, how great is our darkness. And I will say in that area, we compartmentalize a lot do you want the light, Jesus the light, in all areas of your life? And then this darkness theme that we've looked at, being spiritually blind or ignorant or disobedient is a form of darkness. Matthew 11 or 15, 14. And again, let's look at that together. Because just because I referenced it, if you don't look at it, you'll say, oh, okay, and you'll, you'll recognize that you will we'll have never looked at it. But here it is in John 15, or, uh, Matthew 15, 14, where Jesus says this. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if the blind man guides a blind man... Both will fall into a pit. You say, well, that's great. Well, what's that mean? It means simply this. That where you and I are not willing to put light into an area in our lives, but yet we live out that area apart from the light of Christ, we will cause other people to fall into quote, the ditch, unquote, with us. Now think about that. We are little Jesuses in our world through because of the life of Jesus in us. And it mandates us to be people of integrity when it comes to representing who Jesus is through us to our world. And then I would go to Matthew 1, 9, and maybe for time's sake I will conclude there. I was going to go a little farther. Jesus says this in, in Matthew, or I'm sorry, in John 1, 9. He says this about light and darkness. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. Jesus 
by virtue of his presence, called attention to who God the Father was. And I'm, pre- I'm preaching this morning, sharing these texts, not because I have mastered them, but because I have recognized the importance of working on mastering them. And can it be said of each of us, and I think I know the answer, I know the answer for me, Are we in every situation representing what Jesus would want if he were in fact in the flesh as he was in the Gospels in that situation? You see, the world hungers for Jesus, but they can't see Jesus. Okay, you've you've egged me on and I've got to do this. Notice this, One fourteen, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten, full of grace and truth, made flesh. Maybe we can look at those and recognize that we simply need to go further next week. But this idea of make, being made flesh, this Ephesians 4, 15 and, uh, through 16 talks about we are to grow up in him as mature, maturing Christians. We could look at verses 21 and through 24, but we also recognized the idea of tabernacle. Do you remember what John 1 8 says? Behold, uh, but stay in Jerusalem and until you are endued with power from on high, and then you will be my witnesses where? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. You see, Jesus is not templed in Israel, he is tabernacled, he is a moving about. One of the things that I have recognized about the church in America is that we have lost the concept of tabernacled among us and we have resorted to the idea of temple. If someone says to you, where do you go to church? Do you correct them? Because in America, the building is the church. The the physicalness of the building Do you know that that concept is totally foreign to the New Testament teaching about Jesus? Now, the church is where the building is where the church meets for worship and for study and for teaching. But this is not Jesus. We are Jesus. And so, for time's sake, I'm not going to look at Peter 1.1 and read it, but Peter talks about the indwelling word in us, just like it is in Jesus. Hebrews 11, or Peter here also talks about us being aliens. How many of you believe you will live on earth forever? This earth, like it is now? No. Hebrews eleven thirteen to 16 says, And they searched for a city whose builder and maker is God. And then, of course, this is a passage that Lee shared several weeks ago. In my father's house are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. You see, we are mobile Jesuses walking this earth, pointing people to Jesus Because until they see his light, they walk in darkness. So maybe that's helpful this week as we think about ourselves and the fact that God the Father had a mission for Jesus and that mission 
is ours. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus into our world to be your flesh and blood, living out your word representative. And Father, we, as the church, carry Jesus into our world. Thank you for your word that sheds light on other parts of your word, that challenges us to the core. Because wherever Jesus has manifested himself in each of our lives, and we've let him into the inner recesses of who we are, we represent you through those areas in our world. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are overcomers in this world because of your love. As you expressed it through becoming flesh and blood, as you have expressed it through giving your life into our lives, continue, Lord, to bless us with your presence so we can continue to live out in our world your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.